Councilmember Lee. Present. Councilmember McOsker. Councilmember Park. Present. Councilmember Soto Martinez. Here. Very good. Three present. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, prior to public comment, I'm going to recommend these items uh, go on consent with the following recommendations. Uh, let's see. Three through five. No, sorry, three and five, approve the recommendations in the city administrative officer's report and note and file the board of police commissioner's report. Six and seven, approve the recommendations in the board of police commission's report. Item eight, approve the recommendations in the city administrative officer's report and note and file the board and fire, board of fire commission's report. Item nine, approve the recommendations in the board of fire commission report. Item 10, approve the recommendations in the CAO's report and note and file the mayor's office report. Item 11, approve the recommendations in the city administrative officer's report. In items 12 and 13 and 15 through 19, approve the motions as written. Okay, I'd like to now take a public comment. I will now ask uh, Ms. Soraya, uh, ask Soraya Kelly from the city attorney's office office to provide guidance to the public as they prepare to give us comments. To members of the public wishing to provide public comment, when it is your turn to speak, please state which of the agenda items you would like to speak on. You have one minute to speak on one agenda item or two minutes to speak on two or more items. In addition, those who would like to address the committee with general public comment will be provided one additional minute for a maximum of up to three minutes per person for all agenda items, including general public comment. We will inform you when your time is up. When speaking on the agenda items, you must be on topic. And when in general public comment, you must be speaking to something within the subject matter jurisdiction of the committee. If you are not speaking on topic, or if we cannot tell whether you are speaking on topic, you will get one brief warning from me or the chair. If you do not immediately get clearly on topic or if you again stray off topic, you will forfeit the rest of your speaking time and we will move on to the next speaker. All right, uh, I would like if everybody can line up on my right side, your left side of council chambers, uh, Mr. Developer, Mr. Mike Greenspan, Adam Smith, uh, Daj, uh, Mr. Khan, Mr. Kadane, Mr. Morrow, and someone who goes by the name of Q. When it's your turn, please state your name and which items you'd like to offer comment on. All public comment, all items and public comment. All right, you have three minutes. Okay. Please state your name. Mike Greenspan and the Jew who won't go back to Florida, even though ordered by the Antichrist Catholics. Now, let me go, at the, let me go back to the page, the back page. Um, good old number 19 relative to limiting criminalization to the owners of unlicensed commercial cannabis activity and unlawful establishments. You know, when you tax people at 33%, they find ways to evade the taxes, folks. You don't get it. Other countries, people leave. <laughs> you know, they vote with their feet, they leave. Now, the whole irony, the, the vice chair of this committee, Mr. Lee, happens to be a recipient of a place called the refinery over there in Van Nuys. Yes, the weed people are paying the law enforcement guy, Mr. Lee. He is, I do not know if it is a licensed or unlicensed place, but I do know it's in the public records just for everybody to know. Now, the police are getting these donations from everybody. I'm wondering, they sure come up with $5 million when they need to do political action and get behind RIC KKK Caruso because of their racism. They didn't want to see a Schwarzer gal in the mayor's office. So just letting you know some of these characters involved and what they're like because you can't trust them. In fact, Mr. Lee's predecessor, Mitch Englander, went to federal prison and he was a part-time pig. 
So when we're talking about public safety, yes, you do have to be aware of the police. They are not your friends. They really aren't. And they recently lost, not only did they lose the mayor's race here, <laughs> they also lost one, a recall in Santa Ana. They got trounced. So they're betting the wrong horse. That's the problem. So they get mad at everyone. And now we're supposed to be busting our budget with their salaries. That is really too bad. We don't have the money. I mean, how can I tell it to you that you'd understand? We keep spending like we're at Bloomingdale's. We think money grows on trees. Well, go out, out to Yaroslavsky's District 5, Blumenfield's District 3, and go pick the money off the Jewish money trees to cover these things. Tomorrow's meeting is going to be an emergency meeting done on Ramadan with uh, Mr. McOsker's committee. Everybody else is taking Ramadan off, but not him. That's sad, and, and Soto Martinez is going to be there, and anybody else who's on that committee is going to be there showing contempt for our Muslim friends who make good, positive contributions in the community, and they never tried to stuff this stinky yellow fish that looked like this down my throat over a false Catholic doctrine. If pussy smelled like that, I'd go queer. the agenda. That's right. Please state your name yes. and what items you'd like to speak on. Well, let's see here. All the goddamn fucking items and general fucking comment. <laughs> All right, you have three minutes. Yes. Number one, it's not called a quadruped. It's called an electronic dog. <laughs> and the, this police dog on item one is just a nice little puppy, Hugo. It goes out there and walks around and it welcomes everybody. <laughs> it's just a nice little little puppy dog. And you are going to stop it. Now look at you, Hugo. Look at you supporting the LAPD. Rather than banning this dangerous electronic dog, because all that little electronic dog wants to do is chew the legs off of black people. That's all it's for. And you know it. But when you used to be one of us assholes over here, you were against all of that kind of thing. But now as he wipes his face in shame with all that money he's making, now he remains silent while LAPD arms itself as a military organization. <laughs> yes, now we have all kinds of other shit here. Donations. Nobody understands this agenda. Executive orders. Something about cranes? Who gives a fuck about cranes? <laughs> and then we have the fire department relocating in Kevin De Leon's district. That means that Kevin wants to open a brand new fire station. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> That's right. And as you know, he's still suspended from the council and not allowed to serve on committees, unlike Buckethead. <laughs> Even John Lee can serve on committees. Current price? Oh, you're correct, sir. He's never been suspended either. We'll have Mr. Khan maybe talk about that if there's time. I think it's fucked up. <laughs> and now we will get to the good part, the public comment. You have Tomorrow public on comment. Ramadan, this buckethead Pat McOsker pile of shit scheduled a special meeting for tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning. I thought the council was on recess, giving an observation and shout out to our Muslim friends, but apparently it looks like Hugo's scheduled to be there and defy the Muslim community, along with racist Pat McOsker, and also Padilla. And they will not respond whether they're gonna do this tomorrow, this open defiance. So if you show up here tomorrow at 10 a.m., you are nothing but an agent of the Israeli government, and you support the murder of children in Gaza. <laughs> so remember that, because that buckethead over there, he's doing it to show his Irish roots, because he's a fucking Celt. <laughs> and they hate Muslims. Even John Lee doesn't hate Muslims. Tracy Park, on the other hand, hates everybody but police. Have a good day. Thank you, next speaker. Please state your name, which item you'd like to speak on. 
My name is Matthias Kidana with the Stop LAPD Spying Coalition, speaking on items 114 and public comment. You have two minutes for the items and one minute for public comment. On the robot dog uh, annual report, uh, just to be clear, this is uh, you know a motion, um, a piece of surveillance technology that the city universally objected to, and it was passed with this kind of amendment that there would be some semblance of oversight. And I just want to point out the sham of that oversight and also the inconsistencies in what's listed in front of you in this report. The report that went through the Board of Police Commissioners uh, pr pretends to list all the deployments of this robot dog. One instance on there describes a barricade with uh, someone who was armed on a bus. The LAPD reported that this person had a firearm. They went on the news and told the story about how this person had a firearm. Come to find out, reports later on showed, this was a person who was asleep on the bus, and their firearm was in fact a BB gun. That is not reflected in your quarterly report. The, the fiction of a firearm is still placed there. Another deployment that's kind of lacking, or that's just straight up not in this report, is Krikorian's deployment of this robot dog at a holiday fest, right? And that is the function of this 278,000 military surveillance weapon. It is a PR tool. It is a publicity tool. It is something that solidified LAPD's relationship with Boston Dynamics and ensured they maintain their resources. That's all these amendments and all these oversight motions do. On the real-time crime centers, this, uh, you know, this committee's discussing it like it's a foregone conclusion. I see Park and Lee laughing over there. But we don't necessarily, you know, accept the premise that this is something that the city wants or the city needs. If anything, this uh, rollout is based on the fiction a, of a re retail organized, organized retail theft spree that the national, uh, um, national retail boards have even come out against saying is a fiction. And so we want to point out the lie of even the crisis that's been manufactured to kind of justify the acquisition of this technology. Furthermore, it's not going to keep anybody safe. Cameras haven't kept anybody safe. So what does a network of 10,000 cameras um, actually do, if not keep people safe? It deputizes the public in order to criminalize the same communities that have always been criminalized. Minute for public comment. Lastly, just even on that note, uh, what this kind of in addition to the cameras at play here, right, there's a Fuses software system, uh, a data aggregation system similar to Palantir that's been widely condemned across the country. What at, what's at play here beyond the cameras is uh, the ability for the LAPD to consolidate all this data and connect all these data points in whatever way they want. What the LAPD is getting is the ability to tell whatever story they want with this data, connect it to ALPRs. And that facilitates the criminalization of whomever they want, right? And so uh, we just want to uplift that that is the intention at play here. We also want to uplift that FUSIS, the technology that's um, being implemented along with these real-time crime centers, is no different than the AI technologies being used to facilitate the death and the destruction of Palestinians and of Palestine and being used in Gaza. And so this entire committee is a sham. We reject this notion. We reject any conversation around it. Uh, but you all know that. And I think the desired outcome is the racist violence. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Next speaker. Please state your name, which items you want to speak on. My name's Adam, and I'd like to speak on number 114 and general public comment. You have two minutes for the items, so one minute for public comment. Wow. Thanks. Um, yeah, again, my name's Adam. I'm from the Los Angeles Community Action Network and our Human and Civil Rights Committee. Um, in the original motion, um, Council Member Park's motion states that real-time crime centers prevent and interrupt crime as it happens. This is a myth. Surveillance cameras have been used for at least 20 years in Los Angeles, and they do not prevent or interrupt what the city tracks or defines as quote-unquote crime. We know that communities that are most surveilled by police and these city cameras in Los Angeles, namely Skid Row, Jordan Downs, MacArthur Park, the Figueroa Corridor, are also communities that are the most criminalized. With camera surveillance and data gathering by the city and police being used to maintain or make worse the condition folks are already experiencing, including high rates of poverty, houselessness, systemic racism, and a long denial of city resources. Uh, at the same time, technology companies including Axon, Motorola Solutions, Predpol, now known as Geolitica, what a name, Nevin Vision and Palantir Technologies, as well as contractors like Justice and Security Strategies, have partnered with the City of Los Angeles and the LAPD to, product, to produce, uh, to product test and develop surveillance technologies and programs that will make them a large profit, treating the communities of Los Angeles, and again, 
thinking about Skid Row, thinking about Jordan Downs, thinking about MacArthur Park, thinking about the Figueroa Corridor. These communities as test subjects, as laboratories, while the communities in which these products are used and tested are pushed more deeply into poverty and face increasing criminalization. And it's worth noting as well that many of these militarized technologies used in connection with real-time crime centers have been, have been developed for use by US military forces and for the IDF and have been used in the ongoing persecution and genocide of Palestinians by Israel in Palestine. You have one minute for public comment? Great, thanks. Um, so I don't know if you all have heard about this, but about a year ago, um, the Los Angeles City Council voted unanimously on a motion that, would a that asked for a 60-day report back on Los Angeles Municipal Code 4118. I don't know if you've heard of that. Um, I ask in jest, of course, um, Chair Lee. I actually saw you in the hallway the other day when we were meeting with Council Member Hutt and said we've been trying to uh, connect with your office to set up a meeting and you laughed at me. Um, <clears throat> so I'm glad that that's important to you as, as the Vice Chair of the Public Safety Committee. And I bring that up here because it's, you know, with a quickness that you all pass these police toys. There's no real discussion around this shit. And yet, I haven't heard anyone talk about the 300 days today that that 4118 report back has been overdue. Is that not public safety, or is this just a police fucking committee? Thank you, committee? Mr. Smith. Can we have the next speaker? Please state your name, which items you'd like to speak on. You have one minute for the items and one minute for public comment. Hello. Hi, I'm Daniel Talton. I'm here to speak on general comment uh, items 1 and uh, 14, I believe. You have uh, two, minutes, uh, two minutes for uh, those items and one minute for public comment. All right, thank you. I always question the efficacy of public comment, especially when I come in to do public comment and notice that about half the board is on their phones. Um, so starting with that, my name is Daniel Talton. I am your neighbor in CD1 and a member of LA CAN's Human and Civil Rights Committee. I'm here to speak on item one's robot dogs and item 14's real-time crime center. Anyone who has ever seen a movie knows that this is obvious cartoon supervillain stuff. Fitting then, that it is the LAPD that wants it. We hear a lot about how the LAPD is the most reformed police department in the country. LAPD also remains the most murderous police department in the country. It is patently obvious to me and everyone in this room, and I know you too, that giving the most murderous police department in the country robot dogs and near omniscient surveillance of the people of Los Angeles is unsafe for the people of Los Angeles. It is obvious that a militarized police is unsafe for the people of Los Angeles. It is so obvious, in fact, that again, I know that you know that it is unsafe for the people of Los Angeles. Do not pass these items and make a farce of the public safety committee of all places. It is obviously absurd. For the sake of the safety of me and my neighbors and you, and to save yourself a deep stain on your human soul, stand up to the LAPD. Do not pass these items. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. You have one minute for the items and one minute for public comment. Andrew and I'm here to comment on item 14 and on public comment. You have one minute for the item and one minute for public comment. I teach science to some of the most heavily surveilled and by extension most criminalized of our youth and so I'm opposed to the ex uh, expansion of the LAPD's real-time crime centers through the integration of existing surveillance cameras. Surveillance cameras do not prevent what City Hall calls crime. Instead, they primarily serve to further criminalize the communities who are already disproportionately targeted by the LAPD. For example, for over two decades, the dragnet data gathering of automatic license plate readers has disproportionately targeted poor black and brown communities. Peregrine Technologies would provide these real-time command centers with data that not only includes arrest and license plate records, but also that from cell phones and social media that, when decontextualized, could be used to fabricate reasonable suspicion, to justify detainment, and the violent use of force that so often follows. 
This proposed expansion of already oppressive surveillance networks would further militarize the policing of our communities. Uh, and this is evidenced by the language uh, of the LAPD, which re refers to digital war rooms and command centers, as well as by the fact that the companies that collaborate with the LAPD on this surveillance employ these same technologies to target people from Jordan Downs to Palestine. The most surveilled communities are the most criminalized and not the safest. Instead of further enriching corporations like Peregrine Technologies, our city should be expanding the supportive services, healthcare, education, parks, and libraries that actually make communities safe. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please state your name and which items you'd like to speak on. You have one minute for the items, one minute for public comment. Uh, my name is Ryan, and I would like to speak on item 1, 14, and public comment. You have two minutes for items and one minute for public comment. Um, so I'm a data scientist and data analyst. Um, and I called here, I think it was last summer, about uh, the robot dog back with a bunch of other people from the city that universally oppose this. Um, robot dog is just another extension of faulty technology uh, and a future line item that will have much money spent over it. Um, in data science, we use uh, you know a term to describe such technologies as garbage in equals garbage out. You know this operates off of data that has been collected in um, you know constantly surveilled communities where people think that crime actually exists, and it only goes to expand and multiply that sort of uh, bias and um, the surveillance of those communities. Um, on top of that, it costs $280,000, which could be spent on supporting uh, the community. Um, and it has the capacity to carry a payload, which is just messed up. Um, so yet again, I am calling on y'all to please reject the robot dog. Don't let it become another line item. Um, for number 14 with uh, real-time crime centers, this has been, these have been in existence in Los Angeles for 20 years. Uh, it doesn't make sense to be using them. Um, we've seen constant examples of these being used in other communities uh, and not being successful and uh, surveilling the community and putting um, improper flags on people, uh, such as in New Orleans. Um, it was used to surveil and arrest a black man that was suspected of having a gun. He didn't have the gun and he sued the city. So. There you go, another line item, another thing purchased that is not gonna be helping the city and only costing more money. Um, on top of that, I've heard a lot of conversation about, and I see some of y'all on your phones right now. I'm sure some of you are on iPhones right now or something like that. You know how in your iPhone, how it asks you, how you don't want your apps to track from other apps and whatnot? That is another example of a real-time crime center in your hand. And the fact that you all use iPhones and that you say, oh, I don't want my apps to track me. What do you think the community is saying about that? That you're doing the same exact thing that the tech companies that you guys advocate against, um, hopefully, um, you're doing the same exact thing that they're doing. So it's just feeding into an ongoing system of, as I said, garbage in equals garbage out. Please stop surveilling the communities. Please stop going with these algorithms. Algorithms are things that are meant to solve problems and you're calling the people of our city a problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Please state your name and which items you'd like to speak on. You have one minute for the items, one minute for public comment. My name is uh, Hamid Khan with Stop LAPD Spine Coalition, so item 114 and general comments. Two minutes for the items, one minute for public comment. So one of the things that the Stop LAPD Spine Coalition does regularly is to desensationalize the whole rhetoric about public safety and national security as well. And here we go again, because how this has been framed. So going back to uh, last year, one of the key items that the LAPD kept on talking about, they wanted to expand the real-time crime center, was retail crime. That is like billions of dollars have been taken away, merchandise has been stolen. Well, 
so what? Well, in December, the National Retail Federation came back itself and clarified, which was covered by New York Times, Washington Post, LA Times, that of the $94.5 billion of missing merchandise, they clarified and says it's less than 5%. It's less than 5%. And then they went off in their own world about like, you know, this is inventory accounting and all that kind of bullshit that we hear from these people. However, in the same vein as post 9-11, the National Security Police State kept on expanding. That's exactly what we saw. It was the rhetoric of the Muslims are here, the terrorists are here, the anarchists are here, the commies are here, the immigrants are here, the rapists are here, and everything else and everything in between. That expanded the national security police state, and that's exactly what we are seeing, the massive expansion of the national security police state. As, you know, just as Tracy Park talks about in the motion to prevent and interrupt crime, as it happens, that's a myth as well. This is nothing new. The LAPD for decades has had the, uh, the RACER, R-A-C-R, -R, Real Time Analysis and Critical Response Division which was exactly what the real-time crime center will do. And that, that's what we are talking about. But what we have now is a massive expansion of the architecture of surveillance and the ecology that people are going to be living in. We've seen that happen because this is about deputization of people. And we see that as a license to racially profile, as a license to target people, the undesirable, who need to be banished. We saw exactly the results that happened with the suspicious activity reporting program. Drawing that analogy of I watch, see something, say something. Well, when we forced the OIG to do an audit on those programs, guess what? You know, we found out that the majority of these secret files were open on individuals identified as black. 31% of those files identified people as black in a city that has 9% black population. Uh, when they had gender listed, 50% were listed as black women. So this is exactly what we are looking at, and now you're bringing in technologies like Peregrine and Fusus. Well, Peregrine is a cheaper version of Palantir. We forced the LAPD to shut that contract because Palantir has been used to deport millions of people from the United States and all over the place. So this is, this is the kind of technology that we are talking about, and you're bringing in Fusus, Fusus, which is going to fuse and all of these things. So the issue here is, does anybody of you know exactly what these programs are? Does anybody of you have even have an iota of knowledge what these police functions are? Well, I suggest you read some of our reports. One of the reports is before the bullet hits the body that lays out the conditions on the ground that are set up which will lead to murder and major harm to our communities. So just say no to all of these things that the LAPD is asking. Thanks, sir. Is there anyone else here that signed up for public comment that has not yet had the opportunity to speak yet? Seeing none, let's close public comment. Uh, before we move on, I just want to announce that we are joined by our colleague, Councilmember McCosker. As I mentioned prior to public comment, I'd like to take uh, items number three, five through 13, 15 through 19 on consent uh, with the recommendations that I made earlier prior to public comment. Mr. Lid, will you please call the roll on those items? Very good. Councilmember Lee? Yes. Councilmember McCosker? Yes. Councilmember Park? Yes. Councilmember Soto Martinez? Yes. Very good. Those items pass. All right. Uh, we have a request to take items uh, two and item number two and four for a separate vote. Can we call those items together, Mr. Litt? Very good. Items two and. Councilmember Lee? Yes. Councilmember McOsker? Yes. Councilmember Park? Yes. Councilmember Soto Martinez? Yes. Oh, no. Sorry. No. Very good. Items two and four. All right, Mr. Lid. And then uh, item, if we could take up, if you could read into record item number 14. Good. Give me a moment. Uh, Mr. Chair, would you like to make some comments if that's, that's yeah, okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm just having them read the record. Okay. I'll give you the opportunity to speak. Item 14, Motion Park Lee relative to integrating existing public camera networks into the LAPD's real-time crime centers and related matters. All right. Councilmember Soto Martinez, if you want to would like an opportunity to speak on this. Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Um, I just want to, you know, express a lot of concern that I have regarding this, uh, this technology. You know, we've heard from a lot of the advocates here today. Um, and as someone who worked on issues of immigration for a very long time, I'm familiar with Palantir and the harm that it has done to a lot of the communities. 
even in that work that we were doing that, we just simply didn't even understand the technology that was being used. I mean, it got, and there was folks that did understand, did understand it and would update us on these, on these, um, on how the technology was used. And, and it's, it's, it's kind of frightening to sort of be voting on something that we truly, truly don't understand. Um, now, I think the report will be able to shed some light and we'll be asked for more questions. Um, but the, we also know that the, allowing this technology has the potential to create a, very, a surveillance, a surveillance uh, state here in the city of Los Angeles. Now, what we're voting on today is, is a report, and so I will support a report, but I do want to make it clear that seeing this technology in my district, I find deeply problematic. Uh, I see a lot of many, many issues with that, and so I think when it comes to things in my district, I think the discussion will be very different. But I look forward to seeing this report uh, and looking at the many things that are potentially wrong with this or are wrong with it. Uh, and I think we'll be able to have a much longer and lengthier discussion once we get that report back. Uh, but again, I'll be supporting it today, but I want to make it abundantly clear to the public that I, I, I do not want to see this in my district, uh, which I will have a lot more discretion over. But uh, I just want to make those comments so everyone, so every, the, this body understands where I'm coming from and also for the public. Thank you, Councilmember Senator Martinez. Would any of the other committee members like to speak on this item? I, just a, a few comments, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mr. Soto Martinez, for, for your comments and your support, and I look forward to uh, working together on this uh, when the report comes back to identify issues that may need to be addressed. Um, but I also just want to say a few words in support of this motion as well. In the west side of Los Angeles, we have had rampant retail theft and organized crime that has driven our local business community to the brink. We see row after row of boarded up businesses in just one strip mall in the last couple of weeks. Every single business had its windows broken and was robbed. We see street takeovers occurring on a regular basis. Just over the weekend, two women in Venice Beach were violently assaulted. Because of defunding and chronic understaffing at LAPD, we simply do not have enough police officers on the ground in our neighborhoods to be in all of the places that are necessary and finding ways to supplement their efforts through technology that both serves as evidence, a deterrent, and a tool to keep police officers safe is something that we very seriously need to look at and consider expanding. So I'm very excited for these, report back, these reports back and very eager to see how these pilot programs uh, operate in the three divisions where they're currently being rolled out. So thank you so much, and I do urge an I vote. Thank you, Councilmember Park. Any other committee members wish to speak on this item? Seeing none, Mr. Litt, can you please call the roll on this item? Councilmember Lee? Yes. Councilmember McOsker? Yes. Councilmember Park? Yes. Councilmember Soto Martinez? Yes. All right, before we move to our next item, I believe Mr. Uh, Councilmember Soto Martinez wishes to speak on uh, an item that we already voted on, Council yeah. Member? Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Chair. I just want to uh, thank uh, Council Member uh, McCosker for uh, joining me in this motion. This is item, item 19, uh, and we have folks here from the Public Defenders Union, uh, President Mer Meredith Gallen, and uh, Public Defenders Union Local 148. Uh, we voted on this on consent, but it's really looking at how oftentimes workers are affected by uh, you know, uh, unscrupulous uh, cannabis actors. And so uh, I think I look forward to moving this along the process, but I do want to give a thanks to Councilman McCosker and for the folks that came here today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you, Mr. Martinez. All right, Mr. Lid, uh, I believe that takes us to item number one, the only remaining agenda item. Could you please read it into the record? Very good, just one moment. Okay, item number one, Board of Police Commissioners reports relative to the quadruped unmanned ground vehicle quarterly inspection reports 
for quarter one and two of fiscal year 2023-24. All right, colleagues, last year the council approved a donation to the LAPD for a quadruped, unma a quadruped unmanned ground vehicle, uh, more commonly referred to as the robot police dog when approved by council. We requested quarterly updates. The first one was released right before the holidays and we did not have time to hear prior to the second one coming out today is my, my hope is that we can take both the first and second quarter updates together. I believe uh, Commander uh, Shannon Paulson here today uh, from the LAPD. Commander, welcome. The floor is yours. Good afternoon, sir. As you stated, I'm Commander Shannon Paulson. I'm the Assistant Commanding Officer of Counterterrorism and Special Operations Bureau. I'm here to address the Quadruped Unmanned Ground Vehicle, or QUGV, quarterly reports covering the first two quarters for fiscal year 23 and 24. There were a total of three deployments, one in the first quarter and two in the second quarter, all involved encounters with suspects believed to be armed and who had barricaded themselves in some form or fashion and initially refused to submit to arrest despite ongoing attempts at communication and crisis negotiation. For the first quarter, on August 12th, 2023, the QUGV was deployed in the field for the very first time. This incident involved a suspect believed to be armed who had been involved in an officer-involved shooting with Olympic Division patrol officers. The suspect fled in the course of that officer-involved shooting, ultimately barricading himself behind a staircase on the exterior of a structure and refused rep repeated attempts by personnel to gain his surrender. He was observed at that time to still be in possession of what appeared to be two firearms, a rifle, and a handgun. SWAT personnel responded to this scene at that time after the officer-involved shooting. The suspect, who had been previously struck by gunfire multiple times, uh, continued to refuse to surrender despite his injuries and obviously uh, a medically compromised condition. The two, the two firearms remained in close proximity. Ultimately, both the QUGV and an older model robotic were deployed simultaneously in an effort to remove, remove the weapons from the immediate vicinity. They were essentially within arm's reach. The QUGV effectively removed the rifle, but the older robotic was unable to secure the handgun. The QUGV was immediately redeployed and successfully retrieved the handgun. SWAT officers were then able to approach and safely took the suspect into custody, at which time medical, medical aid was immediately rendered. For the second quarter, there were two incidents. The first one occurred on October 17th of 2023, patrol officers responded to a radio call where the suspect had fired multiple rounds into a neighbor's apartment, then barricaded himself in his own apartment. The QUGV was deployed onto the third floor of the apartment building to monitor the suspect's actions from a position otherwise unsafe for officers. The QUGV proficiently negotiated the stairs and was positioned outside the suspect's apartment door, which was midway down a narrow hallway. After repeated attempts to convince the suspect to surrender were met with negative results, chemical agents were introduced, at which time the suspect exited the apartment and surrendered without incident. The second incident for the second quarter was on November 8th of 2023. Hollywood patrol officers responded on a radio call of a man with a gun on an MTA bus. The remaining passengers and driver exited the bus as the suspect remained seated near the rear. Patrol officers attempted to communicate and negotiate his surrender, but the suspect was non-responsive. SWAT responded and continued attempts at communication with negative results. The QUGV was deployed into the bus, at which time officers were able to observe via the QUGV's video feed the suspect lying on a seat, appearing asleep or unconscious, with a handgun laying beneath his legs. As the QUGV approached, the suspect awakened and moved his position away from the, the approaching robotic, abandoning the firearm. At this time, the QUGV was remotely moved into a position to block the suspect's easy, easy ability to move back to the location of the handgun. Verbal negotiations continued, and the suspect eventually exited the bus and surrendered. In all three cases, the QUGV operated as expected, providing our SWAT officers with additional options and de-escalation tools and a better situational awareness, thus reducing the potential for violent confrontations. I'm prepared to answer any questions you may have regarding any of these specific deployments or the QUGV program. Thank you, Commander. You know, I, I think it's obvious that you believe that this was beneficial to the 
uh, safety of the officers. Um, I want to know if you feel it's been beneficial to the suspects as well of having the QUGV out in the field. Absolutely. I think the, the QUGV is, is an advanced robotic, so it's, it's much more versatile and mobile uh, than our prior or historical robotics. It offers, the, us, offers us the ability to communicate uh, with, with any suspect or subject, uh, to be able to locate them and avoid, as I stated, any kind of an escalating confrontation. Um, and but much better situational awareness for our officers, providing safety for all parties. All right, thank you, Commander. Colleagues, Councilman. Sounds to me like it's doing exactly what it is supposed to be doing. Thank you. Congratulations. Keep up the good work. Uh, Councilman McCosker. No, thank you for the report. I appreciate it. Councilman Rico San Martins. Yeah, I have a couple. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. So I'm looking at the video of the, the first incident that you described. Um, the person appears to be passed out. Like, I mean, they're pretty immobile. Um, I know he was moving before, but... And I think, sorry, sorry, let me take a step back. So part of the original debate was, do we need this, right? Um, because there's other robotics, other drones that could be used. So in, in this example, what was unique about using this, this technology as opposed to something else? Like why, why, why was this necessary, I guess? Are you referring to the, the individual that had been involved in the shooting and was barricaded behind the stairwell, sir? I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the, yes, the guy that appears to be passed out. Yes, the, the weapons that had been in his possession uh, that had led originally to the officer-involved shooting, uh, which he had been brandishing on a, on a very busy, uh, populated street in Hollywood Division, were actually laying within close proximity to him. And as was displayed actually in the third incident I reported on, on the MTA bus, you know, uh, that individual, we weren't sure if he was conscious or sleeping, and he immediately awoke uh, with the approach of, of the robotics. So we can presume he would have engaged in the exact same waking up with the approach of officers. That is always a risk. To your point, yes, uh, it appeared and it was acknowledged that he appeared medically compromised. We knew that he was injured. We knew that there was a wish to work as safely as possible but as exp expeditiously as possible in order to get him medical aid. The, the QUGV and as was displayed as we, for that purpose, we deployed simultaneously two robotics in order to try and control and take into our, our possession the two weapons that we believed were within his reach. The older robotic failed. It was unable to, to grasp the smaller firearm uh, and thus the QUGV, which, which appropriately grasped the, the rifle in question and removed it from his proximity back to our possession, was then redeployed to, to take the, the handgun. That eliminated that greater risk to officers. It enabled them to be able to safely approach without obvious risk of, a, of an escalated confrontation that could lead to greater injury for anybody involved um, and get medical aid to that injured party that much faster. Right. Okay. And then on the, I think the third incident, the one that was on the, on the, on the bus, I think that's, that's Correct, sir. Okay. And was it like a school bus or was it, a, I don't have that video, was it an MTA bus? It was a, a hinged, one of those larger uh, hinged uh -huh. MTA buses. Uh -huh. And so what was, what, why was it necessary, again, to deploy this QUGV? Because I'm just trying to understand, because that was the part of the debate and when we first voted on this item. Like, was it necessary because there's other technology? In this case, I can sort of, I could, you could see through the, the bus, you can probably see from the outside what's going on. And so how, how did this technology benefit the situation? Well, again, this was an individual who by all reports of the occupants of that bus and the 911 call came from the occupants of that bus, he was in possession of a firearm. Uh, he was the only party that did not exit. He was non-communicative and non-responsive to repeated officers' attempts to negotiate, uh -huh. uh, to speak with him, to get him to exit the bus. Any officer that, any time an officer approaches an individual who is armed or believed to be armed, has a potential to to escalate into a, a deadly force scenario. 
uh, it is always safer uh, to use technology in order to gain better situational awareness, figure out the exact location of the, the suspect or individual, uh -huh. the uh, location, if we can, of any weapons that might be in his possession or in his proximity, to be able to initiate some kind of communication, ideally, and again, continue efforts at negotiations sure. and, and surrender. In this case, this individual appeared to become startled and wake up with the approach of the robotic and moved away from him, allowing that dog to, to be placed, that, that robotic QUGV, to be placed between him and what appeared to be a handgun and ultimately gain his, ability, his, his surrender by exiting the bus and submitting to arrest. Got it, got it. So let me just sort of regurgitate what you said. So because it was, this person was unconscious but appeared to have a weapon, even though, we, even though people could see that, you could see that through the bus, you could see what was going on, in this situation, we wouldn't send a police officer to engage the individual because of the perceived threat of that weapon. So in this situation, you sent, it sounds like you sent, you sent in a robotic that had the ability to capture, or to grab the gun, uh, or that would appear to be a weapon from the gentleman. And that was, that was just a safer option than sending somebody inside. Well, in this case, they, it didn't grab the gun because based on the actions of the, of the, the subject, we, we, we simply right. placed the dog, the, the robotic, between him and the gun to, to prevent his easy return to it was our goal at that point. But yes, the, the, the QUGV is, is capable of grasping and removing items like that. Now, in this case, I mean, and I would ask you to picture a bus, a large sure. framed bus uh, with raised windows that you and I standing at street level aren't, aren't easily going to be able to see. We aren't easily going to be able to see a potential firearm lying on the floor of that bus. We aren't easily able to see the actions of a suspect with the, a large portion of his body being below that window level, as we, you know, windows sit about shoulder height on a bus. You're also looking at an environment where officers are forced to enter in what we call linear deployment, which means there's frequently limited access for ingress or egress, and officers have to commit to approaching that suspect down a very narrow aisle with not a lot of cover, uh, and if that individual were to awaken and reach for that firearm, officers are frequently left with very little choice. We, we want to avoid that. We right. want to, to leave ourselves with as many options as possible to bring any scenario to a peaceful conclusion. Right. You know, thank you for explaining that. Yeah, I, I really want to put myself in, in the, the shoes of, the, of why the decision. That, that's a very, very thoughtful answer. Um, and, and you said Hollywood was one of the divisions. What were the other two? Uh, the original, the first deployment was an Olympic division. Um, the, uh, let's see, the second one, which was inside the apartment complex, was actually in the north end of Newton Division on 7th Street. Uh, and then the third one was an MTA, MTA bus in Hollywood Division. Okay, thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you for your report. None of questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilmember Senator Martinez. Uh, Commander, thank you so much for this report. Uh, I think it's uh, great to hear uh, some of the things that you said that not only provided uh, a little more safety for our officers, but I believe as the public and, and even the suspects as well. So we appreciate your time in, re in reporting to this, uh, reporting to us. I, I would like to note and file this report dated November 17th, 2023 and March 21st, 2024, as it is informational only. Uh, Mr. City Clerk, do we have to take the roll on this item, seeing as we're not uh, Yes, we would. All right. Councilmember Lee? Yes. Councilmember McOsker? Yes. Councilmember Park? Yes. Councilmember Soto Martinez? Yes. Very good. Matters are noted and filed. All right, Mr. City Clerk, can you confirm, uh, are there any other items? Confirm the desk is cleared? Uh, that clears the desk. All right. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>